Oh, that was a nice introduction. Thank you very much, Ricky. So, uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for giving me the chance to come talk to you today. Uh, when Peggy Lasware, our uh, board chair, uh, told me about this event and asked me if I'd like to participate, I was uh, excited to sign up. And uh, so I'm very pleased to be here today, and uh, Ricky's done a bit of an introduction already, but yes, I've spent uh, about 25 years in uh, food and drug, and uh, started with a manufacturer, then worked with a distributor, and then worked with retail the last uh, several years, uh, Save On Foods, Sobeys, and Rexall as well, and then joined Calgary Co-op last November. So relatively new, loving Calgary and the people here, and uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's interesting for me to be here today because I've sort of uh, sat on different ends of the table having started with the manufacturer, as, as Ricky said, then worked with the distributor as well as the retailer. And we'll talk a little more about how the, uh, the entire chain, uh, supply chain really uh, you know, governs the ultimate uh, output on food safety. He also introduced Calgary Co-op, so thanks a lot. Uh, something that uh, people don't know about us, we also are uh, very active in our communities and uh, focus on not-for-profit and charitable organizations, and we invest over $4 million annually on, uh, uh, in, in the local community through our foundation, uh, Calgary Co-op Foundation. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't start by uh, first introducing uh, Rob Morphew. So, Rob, if you want to just stand and give everyone a wave. Uh, Rob is our Director of Health, Safety, and Environment. So. Uh, I'm going to look very knowledgeable here because Rob has prepared me uh, today to, to speak on the subject uh, of uh, the future of food safety. Thank you, Rob. And I will say as a disclaimer in advance, if there are any tough questions at the end, I'm going to invite Rob up to, uh, to come and give you some specific answers. So thanks for being here, Rob. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about food safety. And uh, I've done the introduction piece, so we'll go to a, a photo I have uh, that uh, we took in the store the other day but uh, fresh for you and your family. Uh, today I'm here to describe to you what role we as a retailer play in the food safety chain and how we see our future role. Growers and manufacturers have their respective roles in keeping our food safe in the earlier stages of getting it to consumers. But it all means nothing if the last group to touch the product doesn't have a solid program to ensure that the initiatives, processes, and quality that is already in the food can't be sustained due to a poor program. Food safety is about an integrated partnership with all parties taking responsibility for it. When I talk about a retailer perspective on food safety, one might think that it's really simple. We order from suppliers, we display the product, and it sells to our consumers. But there's more to it than that, and in order to put it all in perspective, we have to first look at some of the local and global issues we face daily to understand that there's more to it. And then take steps to ensure our product is safe for consumers each and every time they make a purchase in our stores. The issues of today are very much shaping the future for producers, manufacturers, and us as retailers. Today's food environment is complex, and it's getting more complex, and there are a number of challenges that retailers are faced with. Each one of these issues already puts tremendous pressure on the retailer in meeting the needs of today's consumer. A consumer who is more aware and conscious of the food that they're putting on the table for their families. A customer who is more willing to speak up about concerns they have with the food they purchased. So some of the issues today are weather, storms and weather-related issues which create challenges for product quality as well as for transportation. Supply and demand swings. And then recalls. We have voluntary recalls due to product quality. And then we have mandatory recalls due to undeclared ingredients. Allergens, E. coli, listeria, salmonella, or other pathogens that affect the quality of the product. And as I said earlier, more and more consumers are turning to uh, products that, uh, that are gluten-free or non-GMO products for healthier eating. And they're talking about it more. They're, they're freer with their conversations in social media, et cetera. In the future, the global economy and fast-changing world will create additional challenges for the retailer to keep our food safe. For example, logistics from field to customer and the stability of trading partners 
and their ability to move products freely across borders. Pricing. Today, prices are relatively low in our food stores, but where will they be in six months, two years, and five years? Fuel costs, for example, impact retail costs. So what about weather? Drought and flood and hail and other environmental factors? Global warming has had an impact on these weather phenomena. If you look at California over the last few years, they've had significant drought, and that impacts our costs and our supply. Consumers today expect quality food for the prices they're paying. As they become more educated on healthy eating, these same consumers have higher expectations for what they're paying, and the quality control is one of their concerns as well. Cleaning and sanitation practices will continue to be a concern, and confidence in brands and products decreases with each round of Listeria, E. coli, and recalls. Do we need stronger chemicals to clean and address bacteria that could become more resistant to the current chemicals we're using? And will our consumers be okay with that? Which group will take the lead and introduce must-meet standards? Will it be the government? Will they have the desire to focus and force increasingly stricter and higher standards? Or will it be us as an industry developing self-policing? Which one is more effective? And which one is more cost-efficient for us? The availability of product from new sources and the ability of those sources to meet demand and growth. Another key factor, population growth in some of our key importing re regions removes land from cultivation and from production. Are we able to meet tomorrow's needs with today's supply? Probably not. Processing of product and the quality of that product. Consumers are conscious and very aware of tainted product today, more so than ever before. We can only expect further increases in their knowledge and awareness in the future. And labor shortages. As workers are shying away from our traditional farming and retail jobs in favor of higher paying jobs, we face this all the time in retail. Uh, it's not quite as glamorous. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of people don't want to work there, and if they are, they don't want to stick around very long. So training of labor and the skills they need to do the job effectively, efficiently, and to standards is key. And we're doing it in an environment where we're seeing uh, you know, people not necessarily wanting to stick around in that workforce. Training takes resources, and many companies would sooner put that into production. So that's another challenge to stay the course and continue with training. And the connected consumer is more willing to share their stories with the public before the facts are validated by a company or a credible source. Incorrect or unsubstantiated information on product quality or concerns can create public hysteria and confusion. So what's the big deal? What do we as retailers have to do? Well, very few people think about the challenges retailers have in supplying consumers. Again, you know, product just shows up on our shelves. Presumably, we placed an order with the supplier and then just filled the shelf. When we think about everything I've listed on those first couple of slides, each one of those can have a significant impact on the ability of us as retailers to provide fresh, safe quality food to our consumers. Food safety is tied to all of the challenges suppliers shippers, and retailers will be faced with currently and in the future. Increased legislation or standards, increased cost. Will consumers pay for this? Or worse, will companies find ways to get around this? Increased competition to meet consumer needs and changing trends may result in a tendency to cut corners to meet those needs. As labor becomes increasingly hard to attract, what will suppliers and manufacturers do? Farmers, processors, logistics, and finally, retailers need to maintain a steadfast approach to meeting the standards set by the government or the industry. The temptation to take shortcuts cannot be tolerated, and shortcuts and poor quality control at all levels need to have zero tolerance. Workers need to be given access to quality training to ensure they can make decisions around substandard conditions or practices they're seeing in the workplace that uh, could affect our food safety and affect the food chain, all the way from farmer to retailer. All parties to the food chain must do their due diligence by conducting regular audits and inspections. I was listening uh, as Doug was chatting about that in the earlier presentation. Food safety is a shared responsibility that starts at the supplier, be it the farmer or the manufacturer, and it only ends after the consumer has sent whatever is left from their purchase to a landfill or composting. Gaps in this system 
We'll continue to see questions raised by consumers regarding the quality and re reliability of their food supply. So we all need to be proactive in our approach, keeping it top of mind in all activities that we undertake to ensure we're maintaining consumer confidence. At the retail level, we have to look at a number of measures to ensure that after the product arrives at our doors, we're doing everything we can to ensure that the freshest, safest quality of food is delivered to the consumer each and every time you shop in our stores. So here are some of the factors, training, sanitation, auditing, staying in touch with and reviewing industry information for rapid action, and follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. So let's talk about each one of these. First, let's talk about training. We regularly run in-house training courses for our team members, and these are scheduled. Each year, we schedule training to accommodate over 200 team members in food safety courses. Basic food safety training is also part of our onboarding program when someone joins Calgary Co-op. You don't start your retail career without knowing the basics of food safety. Each fresh commodity team member undergoes regular training on standards and delivery to ensure we can allow consumers to be confident of what they're purchasing in our stores. Training on, for example, sanitation, cleaning schedules, product display and rotation, and temperatures. Consumers are the ultimate judge of the quality of the product they're purchasing from us. And here are a couple of examples for you. Who doesn't like fresh seafood? But keeping it at the proper temperature is absolutely critical. It's, this is a growing category. Consumers are very interested in seafood these days. You go to a dietitian, they ask you to eat, consume seafood a couple of times a week. So we're seeing increasing consumption. Really important for us to manage temperature control uh, on seafood. Uh, chicken, uh, the, again, the presenter before me was talking about chicken in, in Canada and, and the different standards uh, in other parts of the world, but our barbecue chickens need to be cooked and then a proper temperature needs to be held uh, on those as you purchase them. So the quality of food is affected by temperature, whether it be at the receiving door, in the coolers, in the freezers, or on displays after it's been prepared. Temperature checks of hot cases, coolers, and freezers are done regularly in our stores by our team members. Receiving temperatures are checked to ensure product isn't arriving that could already be in the danger zone. Temperature checks are completed of oven equipment to ensure it is operating at the required temperature and cooked food actually has probes to check internal temperature regularly. All of our coolers and our freezers are also remotely monitored by a third party, so should issues arise, we can, uh, we can uh, attack those very promptly. We also have equipment in our stores like slicers, many moving parts and equipment like that has to, there's several intricate pieces that need regular cleaning so we can manage consumer wants and demands in a food safe way. And sanitation. We all remember those companies who have had their recalls or other challenges around food safety and when it happens, it sure makes national news these days, right? Food safety in retail starts with a diligent program of compliance that includes a plan to do check, and act. Our partnership with our cleaning chemical supplier also gives us a second set of eyes monitoring and training team members on our sanitation practices. And our dedicated health, safety, and environmental team, led by Rob, monitors compliance to our food safety program. And they monitor, do monthly checks. Uh, his team goes out and checks to ensure any non-compliance standards are corrected immediately. Uh, let's take a walk through of one of our stores. It's, you know, I always get more energy when I'm walking through a store. So even here, I thought, how can I take you through a store? And thought about a video, but uh, this seemed more practical. So uh, we'll just stroll through a little bit and uh, talk about how we manage some of our fresh food. Each one of these areas of our store, by the way, poses its own challenges with keeping it fresh, clean, food safe. And the retailers can offer all of the items and assortment and offering uh, uh, you want to see. But uh, if it isn't appealing, it doesn't look good, it doesn't look fresh, and it's uh, not kept clean, uh, the equipment or um, containers that it's in is not uh, cleaned, consumers will not be interested in purchasing and we are risk we're risking uh, food safety. So this photo of our, is our fresh to go, in-store salads, which you would have seen in some of our stores. Produce, a gr rapidly growing category where more and more uh, people are consuming produce these days. The meat portions on our center of plate are getting smaller and smaller, and in fact, several people uh, moving to vegetarianism as well. So we're very focused on produce presentation and safety. Uh, we gotta keep it appealing and inviting for you as consumers, 
and uh, so shipping, receiving, how we display it while maintaining temperature and handling appropriately is very, very key. Um, you know, how many of us, when we're buying uh, produce, pick up the produce and you know, check it out before we actually uh, bag it uh, for purchase? So consumers are very particular and we are to uh, not just food safety but the quality of what's being presented. And then we have a very complex uh, and uh, delightful meat program. Uh, for me, having come from other retail environments, it's, this is a real wow. We have uh, what we call the Co-op Perfect Meat Program. Check it out in the stores if you're not already buying. Uh, if you're going to provide, however, a fresh and unique product like this, you have to make sure it lives up to standards, including food safety standards. So very cautious with that. Another program we have is called the Dry Aged Beef Program. And uh, the, the photo here is taken a few days ago, but it reflects uh, the, date, the date that you see in the picture was put in uh, on that product, and then 28 days later, it was cut and offered up to the consumer. So that's, uh, that program as well has to be ma monitored very ca cautiously, dates, temperature in that device, et cetera. Our meat service case, each of these items that you see in the case has to be removed, cleaned, checked for freshness, and anything that's questionable ends up a shrink. Uh, and you know, it's a great temptation for some retailers, I'm sure. Uh, one would think perhaps squeezing one more day out is the way to go. Uh, we err on the side of, uh, of caution. Uh, one more day and a long history of remainder or a small bit of shrink, you know, we, we take the shrink. But you decide what's better out there and you know, this is where I talked about industry policing versus government, etc. In this photo we have our regular Anna Perfect meat offering, so it's uh, labeled appropriately for consumers. Talked about seafood a little bit earlier. Uh, here's a, a view from the side of our seafood uh, case and you can see keeping it fresh requires a good misting system. So that's critical uh, for seafood. Uh, we have a long uh, lineup of meat products, including uh, Perfect Meat. I talked about it earlier. Consumers rate our program the best in the industry. Uh, it's actually uh, one of our ratings where we're far ahead of our competitors. Uh, we're ahead on several others, but meat seems to be something people just uh, love shopping at co-op. Uh, so we always, uh, rather than telling ourselves how good we are, we, we ask the consumer uh, regularly a few times a year, and it's rated very well. Uh, freshness and food safety are a key ingredient of the program. Perfect duck, we have duck that is uh, offered up to, the, to you as consumers. It's refrigerated, it's not frozen. So uh, you know anything that's refrigerated, not frozen, even more caution with uh, how that's managed and temperature controls, uh, et cetera. Similarly, our dairy section, temperature control and good receiving and storage practices are key. If you're in a store and, and you see a pallet of milk uh, lying out on the floor, uh, that's not good, that's a problem. And uh, Rob and I often uh, you know, we'll go out and we talk about this kind of thing as we visit our stores uh, regularly and you know, keep an eye out for things like that. And often, you know, labor didn't show up or we're squeezed for time, et cetera, but these are things that just have to be attended to. Bakery, uh, we bake uh, fresh daily and again, a department that we have to be uh, cautious of uh, from a food safety standard point of view. And I'm going to show you uh, some of the documentation that we use around the store. You'll actually see this if you can, uh, I think it's in a, a part of our store closer to the back room, Rob. So you may not be able to necessarily get in as a consumer, but uh, we post this really for our employees. So this slide is a photo of our delivery and issuing guidelines. Uh, product arrival and receiving is a very important challenge that we face every day. And we want to make sure it's clear to everyone in our team members uh, in the group there that what to do if the product isn't up to standard when it arrives. Uh, if it comes in the door questionable, it compounds our challenges. If we actually receive that product, it compounds our challenges more in terms of keeping it fresh and safe for you. So very cautious with that. Our health, safety, environment, and food safety program is integrated. Through our health and safety program, our team members can raise to the OHS committee any food safety issues they feel could affect our quality or safety. So we might think we've got a great policy and we've got everything covered, but we want an avenue for our employees to be able to notice things and bring it up to us and talk about it. And Rob, by the way, reports directly into me, so uh, he has a very quick line to uh, uh, you know, making decisions and receiving the support we need across the organization. So this, this mechanism ensures that all of our team members are taking an active role in addressing any safety issues. And uh, it's just one of the ways that the team members can bring up concerns about the quality of product or some of our processes, so we're continuously improving. Uh, many of our team members participate in this OHS committee and uh, workplace inspection program, including food safety areas. Uh, this is a photo of a committee uh, monthly inspection assignment 
that uh, report that we post across departments uh, regularly. And auditing. Again, the previous speaker talked a little bit about auditing. So uh, I always say uh, you, it's quite possible you have two policies, the one you think you've got and the one they're using. So you gotta be very careful. Uh, just because you have a program for food safety at the store doesn't mean it's actually being executed and executed consistently uh, in the same manner. So there needs to be a dedicated program and commitment from all parties, especially a strong message from our executive team and myself as CEO uh, that supports compliance and enforcement for deficiencies. Along with this comes the need to have the team check the reporting that comes into me. So uh, you might not like the message, by the way, that they bring you, uh, or they may tell you things you don't wanna hear. Uh, however, uh, it's directly from the folks that uh, are in your team, folks on, uh, that you've hired, and they're helping you keep tabs on the program to ensure that follow-up happens regularly. So, uh, you know, as Doug talked about in the previous presentation, you're not just uh, auditing, but you're doing something about it and with all the support and tools that you need. That's absolutely critical. Uh, well, uh, keeping up to date. So keeping up to date on trends, issues, and challenges is also important to us. And we must know as soon as possible what is happening locally, in the province, uh, in the country, or globally. And being out of the loop would have some serious challenges for us uh, when everyone else is already responding to the issue. So timely information is critical to food safety, and it always will be. Our HSC team monitors health, safety, food safety, and risk management news items on a regular daily basis. And this is shared with us as an executive and also with other decision makers at different levels of the organization who need to take responsibility and act rapidly. You can't be out of the loop and expect to keep up with what is happening in our industry. It's moving very rapidly. A couple of samples for you. This is an industry newsletter from Train Can. It's very good. It's a resource to keep up to date. Uh, and if you're not subscribing to it, you might want to. Uh, here's one from the US, uh, Food Safety News. Uh, and these are just two examples of sources of information for you, but you gotta assess the situation you're in. There are a lot more sources, by the way, and decide uh, you know, how you want to be able to collect your information. But uh, in this day and age, it's really, uh, there's a lot of electronic uh, uh, support that you can, you can get online. So don't just say, don't just say what we had on, on that first slide. Uh, in the end, keeping our food supply safe and ready for our customer once we get it into the store is a challenge, however, with the right approach, a dedicated and committed team, hiring, training, and regular follow-up by numerous partners to the process, we can keep it safe. And it all starts at the top with me as a CEO or whoever's leading the organization. I need to communicate and conduct myself appropriately so that then we ensure uh, that we have food safety, uh, the best food safety practices happening every day, and we have the program and resources to meet the needs uh, and uh, keep our consumers and Calvary Co-op uh, who are counting on us, uh, keep, uh, keep things uh, food safe. So if we're gonna display a sign like this one, I always say, you know, uh, live out uh, what you're communicating. If we display a sign like the one in the photo, fresh for you and your family, then we'd better have a strategy and resources to ensure that we, uh, we meet those needs uh, each and every time. And finally, uh, uh, just a plug for some of the suppliers uh, in the audience. If you're interested in chatting with us about a product that you wanna uh, put in the Calgary Co-op, be it grocery or fresh. Uh, reach out to us. We're interested in hearing from you. We just uh, drop a line to calgarycoop.com slash contact underscore us. Uh, we are open for business at Calgary Co-op, and we would really like to engage with you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>